Hello folks, this is Andy Othling, and I am doing a little video here to show you something I have created for the new Generation Lost Mark II pedal uh, from Chase Bliss Audio. So, uh, the impetus for this is uh, really Tom Majeski and the fact that he, um, for the first time ever, made it possible for every single uh, knob switch and parameter on the pedal to be MIDI controlled. And I think that's really wonderful. So I went and created this plugin that you see here. So this is a Max for Live plugin for Ableton. So let me get this out of the way up front. There are a couple requirements you need to use this uh, plugin that uh, you can get from Chase Bus Audio now. Um, but it is to have Ableton Live, one, and second is to have a, a license for Max for Live. So if you have Ableton Studio, version, you, you already have Max. You're good to go. Um, if you just have a regular version of Ableton, you will either need to upgrade to Studio or get the Max for Live license separately, which you can do. Um, but if you have both those, then you, you will have access to this plugin, which when configured correctly, will uh, completely control your Generation Lost Mark II pedal. So I've got it on here. Uh, the bypass is on. I'm going to start turning the volume up and you will hear a ambient loop, of course, that I am playing through this. Let me turn this up. So we don't have anything really going, um, but as you can see, you can scroll through the different models and see how they sound. You get a nice little uh, label, know which model you are using. Um, and of course, you can do all the normal stuff. Let's make it a stereo spread there. It'll sound nice. More failure, probably. Bring some noise in. And uh, maybe bring the noise down. So what's cool about this is obviously you've got all the dip switches right here. You don't have to reach behind the pedal and mess with it, which is pretty cool. Um, and you've also got all the alt controls. So that hiss value that I just messed with is normally an alt control, but you just have direct control of it here. Mechanical noise mess with like that. Um, you've also got the aux switch onset time, so whatever whatever effect you've chosen here, um, you have direct control of the, the speed that that happens. So we're on stop right now, so if I press the aux switch, we get that tape drop and then back up. You can easily make it a fast drop like this, almost instantaneous, or make it a really slow one like this. So cool. Anyway, so that stuff's just right at your fingertips now, which is great. Um, you've also got a few extra functionality pieces, which this random section, you can randomize any control on the, on the pedal. Uh, just the alt controls, which would be some of this, this stuff here, or just the ramp controls. So let's mess with this a little bit. Let's, let's get these alt controls randomized. I'm just going to keep clicking it'll keep giving me random stuff. So that's cool, just different vibes and textures for the sound. Cool. Um, and then you can do just the ramp parameter. So it's, this is the first time ever you've been able to MIDI control ramping on Chase Plus Pedal, which is awesome. So this is going to be a little strange. Ooh, that one's interesting. Oh, because we're ramping saturate. Let's bounce it too. Interesting. Different ramp. Anyway, you can just get some get some new ideas going with some random functions there. And of course, if you're like, wow, there's too much going on, there's this little button here to completely reset all your dip switches. Um, this part is fun too. I like having instant access to the game. So you've got line and instrument level, which you can switch between. You also got the high gain option, which just means you can smash that stuff, which is great. Um, you can also uh, load and save presets, um, and you've got access to the pre the presets here that are on the front of the pedal. So you've got the no preset option, preset one, preset two. And these buttons here, uh, the sync button is for 
when you've messed around with the pedal, the hardware, and maybe you want it to return to the state that the plugin is in, you hit sync and it just sends out all the messages to update all the parameters. So that's nice. And then um, init here just turns all the parameters to default. So the pedal's off, no dip switch is on, everything at its default value. Let's turn that back on. So this is just a nice way to uh, control it directly. Oh, and last thing too, you can go into classic mode real quick. The knobs change over, you get low pass, high pass, you know? And then a fun thing here is uh, you get direct access to the freeze function. So there's a couple things that'll need to happen. The snag bypass, drop bypass needs to be on, and you gotta be in fail for the aux mode. Um, but if you press the freeze button, it'll do all that for you. Let's see. Yeah. And then unfreeze it. And then go back to regular mode and you got your other knobs back. So that's really neat. I really love using uh, the plugin to to do this stuff with the pedal. But, uh, honestly, the reason I made this plugin and the reason I'm really excited about it is more um, the automation and mapping capabilities that Ableton has and applying that to this. So uh, when I developed this plugin, um, I used a bunch of objects that are meant to, to be used within the Ableton Live framework. So let me show you. Um, that a little bit now we're gonna zoom out and I'm gonna actually show you the Ableton session okay so first things first I'm gonna back up a little bit and say uh, there's probably some of you who are saying well how do I physically how do I connect to the pedal um, and the answer to that is um, in Ableton at least all I do is um, change my MIDI output on this channel to the device that I'm using so I'm using a little USB uh, MIDI sport device that that has a MIDI out and so I choose that, and then I know that the the pedal is on channel 8. I have changed the channel. You can look in the manual on how to change the channel on your device. Um, but this is what makes it so I can talk to, to the pedal, being on channel 8 and on the right interface output. That's what gives me the connection to it. And then hardware-wise, uh, I'm going from the MIDI sport, 5-pin MIDI out into a Disaster Area Q Connect, which then converts that 5-pin MIDI to a TRS MIDI, which plugs into the side of Genloss. So that's how I'm connected up here. Um, so, I, so you see the plugin living here, and I'm actually going to delete it and show you something. So I deleted it, plugin's gone, pedal's just on its own. Um, included with your download of the plugin, which is the .amxd file, um, you should have received a .adg file, which is a MIDI effect rack kind of preset thing that I've included here. So if you click that and drag it in, uh, the plugin will come back, but you'll see there's stuff moving. There's stuff moving on its own. And so this is an Ableton feature. Um, oh wow, that's loud. This, this, this is using some Ableton features that I'm really excited about. So for one, um, I threw in six separate LFOs. Now we all love, you know, the Chase Bliss built-in ramping, but that's one LFO. What we've got here is six different ones that are attached to six different things. Man, that's hot. So I, ha I have brought in uh, six different Max LFOs. This is the default LFO that comes with Max for Live. If you're able to use this plugin in your Ableton session, you will have this, this LFO. So I've got, uh, what is it, five sine, sine wave LFOs at different rates, and I've attached them to different parameters. So I attached them to flutter, wow, saturate, failure, and hiss. So you'll see those five knobs. Uh, wow, flutter, saturate, failure and hits here are moving automatically. So that's really, really neat. It was like one of the first capabilities that I wanted, which was let me throw whatever LFO I want on these parameters, and this is what's happening. Um, so five of those are regular sine wave LFOs. This sixth one is really fun because it is a random LFO, just generating random values, and I've attached that to the aux switch. So anytime 
But basically what happens is anytime it generates a value that's above like 64, um, that switch will be activated. And when it's below, it'll be deactivated. Um, I've messed with the offset on it, so it's ten it tends to get pressed less often. But the coolest part here, let me close these mini close these LFOs, is that I've then used the macros in this effect rack. These are some some Ableton concepts, um, but I've I've mapped some knobs to the to the LFOs, which are then mapped to the plugin. So right here, I've got control over the chance that the aux switch will be triggered. Chance that, that stop effect will happen. So if I start turning it up, we'll see that the aux switch will get pressed more. Which is neat. And then I can mess with the speed, the aux onset speed, and make it so it's... Like that. If I roll it all the way up, it'll just be active. Activated all the time. Oh, something weird just happened there. Press that sync button to get back. If anything ever gets weird using the plugin, uh, hitting that sync button helps. Be like, all right, just kind of reset yourself. Um, especially when you've got a bunch of moving parts. But so that that's something that's really cool. Just one knob here. That's that's the chance that the aux knob will, the aux switch will get pressed. That's pretty cool. And then the other knobs here are really just mapped to the rate of the LFO. So here's the rate for the LFO attached to WOW. I can turn that up and or the WOW now knob is now moving a lot quicker. Um, and same with the other ones. We can turn the hiss one up so that it does that faster. So that's pretty cool. And uh, this this can be this is an example that you guys can use to to mess with the plugin, but also just the the idea here is that, you know, you can pull in a, a, an LFO, like I'll, I'll pull in a new one. Alright, so I turn the volume down. I'm going to delete this again because this, this again is a whole rack you can download and mess with yourself and see what I've done and how I've mapped that. Um, but just to show you, um, I'll bring the plugin back. Where is it? Here. We got it. So it starts like this and you can expand it to the, to the expanded version. Um, but if you want to do the LFO thing yourself, you bring in the max for live LFO, um, throw it right in front of it or wherever on the track, uh, bring the rate down and then, well, let me get something going on here. Turn it on, volume up, sync, mono in, stereo out, let's just get some subtle setting going. Now, the way to map it is you just click map, and then you click whatever you want. Let's do wow. And it's as easy as that. Now you've got a moving knob on your on your gen loss pedal. Um, that is a bit more, you know, it can do more than the built-in LFO that uh, Chase Plus Audio gives us. And that's very fun. So that's that. That's that's mapping. And the the exciting again, the exciting thing to me is that you can take all these things that Ableton can already do and map them to the plugin, and it then converts that to uh, MIDI messages that control the device. I think that's awesome. So I'm going to delete this, turn this down, and what I would like to show you now. Um, since we just did mapping, I'll show you some automation tricks with this. So not only can you map other devices to control this, you can use um, clips and automation lanes to to do more. So I'm I'm on this Gen Loss channel. This is the MIDI channel that contains this plugin. I'm gonna double click and make a new clip. And if, I'm already on the envelope section here, but in the envelope section, I can choose the plugin, which I've done here. And this is the other thing I, I'm very excited about um, is is I've exposed all of the parameters um, from the pedal to automation. So you can go in and click whatever you want. I'm just gonna do volume knob. So I'm gonna make this clip that's just called fade in. And so since I'm on the volume volume uh, envelope, I just have to click here at zero 
add a point and click over here. 16, I gotta go up to like 64. Uh, yeah. Less than that. Oh, whatever. That's close enough. 68. Okay, so so this clip, all it is 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 a clip of going from zero to 68 on the volume knob out of 127. I'm gonna turn loop off. Then I'm gonna double click this and R and call this uh fade in. And then I'm gonna duplicate this. Rename it and call this one fade out. And then on this fade out one, instead of going from zero to 68, I'm going to reverse that. 68 at the beginning, right there. To zero. Great. So now I have two clips, both of them, uh, neither of them loop. So I can now trigger them. So let's trigger the fade in. Let's go. Let's look at the plugin while it does it. So I'm gonna trigger the fade out now. You can see the volume knob goes down. Fade in. Fade out. And obviously, um, you all can't see it here, but I have this controller. Um, this Ableton MIDI controller where I, c I can trigger these uh, clips without the mouse. So I, I'm doing it right here. I'll fade in. I just clicked it. And then fade out. So that, that's, a, that's a real uh, simple example of what you can do. But I mean, you, you could do anything with this. You can, you can automate multiple things at the same time. Uh, let, let's, let, let's make it, instead of fade out, let's make another one down here that's that's um that will loop and we'll call we'll just call this uh trim since we're letting it loop what might be cool i'm gonna expand this um instead of going from max volume to zero uh we'll go we'll start at zero we're basically drawing in our own like tremolo wave here, waveform. I'm just gonna do a triangle because that's easy. So there, there it is. That's the that's the clip now. Zero to to half volume and then back down. So if I if I hit play on this, you hear it doing that volume sweep. Now that's maybe boring, but you can do multiple things in the same clip so instead of volume i can choose uh hiss let's do the hiss knob hiss and we can do like a similar similar thing what if we did the exact same thing zero zero and then 64. so we have a white noise sweep that is exactly aligned with the volume sweep Will it sound cool? Who knows? I'm gonna go back to the plugin and make sure that the noise is on. There we go. And now when I hit trim, we should be seeing the volume and hiss knobs moving in sync. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, that's the, the, uh, new plugin, MIDI controller plugin for, uh, Genloss. I'm very excited about it. And, uh, I think some of you all out there might be able to do some really cool things with this. So, uh, have fun, start mapping, start automating, um, do whatever you want.